I don't have a crystal ball. So when it comes to sorting out the trends around us and what's coming our way, I rely on the people who know it best. I'm Nick from Powtoon and something a little different for you today, an expert interview with none other than Jonah Goldstein, head of learning at 360 Learning. Pencils Ready class, this is going to be an awesome conversation. Like the video if this is your kind of thing, subscribe for more, and let's dive right in. What are some of the trends that you're seeing emerge for 2022 in learning and development? Learning has, has always been, in my opinion, you know, a critical strategic role in a lot of organizations, but I think even more so um, that's the case. I think that organizations are forced to, to be nimble, to be agile. Uh, the pace of change um, just keeps on accelerating. Um, and of course, we get bombarded with lots of other uh, uh, unknowns and variables that, 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 that make um, the, the functioning of an organization difficult. Um, so learning and being a learning organization is absolutely critical. Um, companies need to have their people curious, they need to have their people skilled, they need to have their people on the cutting edge. Um, work needs to be a place where you come and you learn, where you learn from one another, where you're able to share. Peer-to-peer -peer or collaborative learning is so important and I really think is, you know, something that exists but is a trend um, and, the, and, and, and organizations need to get on board with this. And L&D um, uh, professionals like myself, we need to be enablers within an organization. We need to create the opportunities for people and the channels for people to learn from one another, to capture that, that knowledge, that tribal knowledge, that knowledge that exists uh, in certain teams, uh, and really facilitate the flow of information um, so that when there's a business need, uh, we're able to address it quickly, um, leveraging the expertise that we have or finding where that expertise lives. Uh, so I think that the, the, the trend that I see is L&Ds less as uh, content producers and sort of top down, but almost as creating a network within their organizations as knowledge brokers um, and, and really encouraging this curiosity and this exchange of information. Now, what's the role of video that you're seeing, especially uh, among teams who are trying to implement this more holistic approach to learning? The, the role of video today, I mean, is to continue to bring a face to and to, to the expertise that we're sharing within our organizations, um, especially in remote uh, contexts. So, so that's really one major um, value add of video as part of the learning experience for us. I mean, and just to give you a real concrete example of one way that we're really using video and leveraging it is with our sales teams. Our sales reps can record themselves doing um, demos, and that really creates you know, a, a real-life example of how they pitch our product, how they talk about it. And with that video, they can share that with their peers, with their coaches, with their managers, with other people, and they can get feedback on that. So, you know, this kind of real, authentic um, capturing of, of, of how people talk about our product is one example that they can then receive feedback on is a really powerful thing. We, we wouldn't be able to do that without video capabilities. Let's say you've got an L&D team. They're on board with this. They see the trends. How do they get buy-in from the rest of their organization, from their executives, from the other teams? How do they do it? We need to be proactive. We need to be out in the business, talking with people and understanding what the issues, what the challenges, what the opportunities are, um, identifying those, those problems, um, creating or facilitating through collaborative means, learning to address those those issues and communicating around that. And if you have that cycle, that sort of virtuous cycle of, we know what's important, we know how to address it quickly, and we're able to then communicate back to the organization, look, we identified this, um, we worked on it with other stakeholders, and these were the results. Well, that's a success story. And I think that that's, that's the recipe for buy-in really regardless of what you're trying to do, but even more so for, for learning because we're not often seen in that upstream part as identifiers of, uh, of, of critical business uh, opportunities and problems. So if, if we do, and then, and then following that through the end of the chain, we communicate around it and say, we were able to, to spot this. We created this great thing collaboratively with other people and here's the output. Well, then that's a success story that we can replicate. And that's, that's a recipe for buy-in. Yeah, absolutely. 
having that kind of pilot program and then some results to really show for it combined with that really intentional work of positioning learning in the organization and uh, and doing it and doing it at pace because i think that that's what organizations value too if you're able to have a, a win that's done quickly and effectively and brings people together and creates this kind of collaboration around something uh, then that's huge and that's that's a really nice model for what success should look like in a lot of organizations so let's say you you're okay we're going to do that we're going to do a pilot project so that we can show this uh, value here but you know my organization we were primarily using one-on-one -on -one learning long in-person training sessions and things mm -hmm. like that where where should they begin to make this transition a lot of the the, the other LD folks that I you know exchange ideas with we, we talk about onboarding as a use case especially you know for companies that are growing fast that are that are remote that are international where you've got all the challenges and and, and variables of, of a of, a, of an international growing company today. Um, using video in, in that uh, context is really powerful. You can, for example, have you know, videos of, of key players from the organization, from the CEO to the executives, who perhaps in, in times past would bring people together all in one room and have the luxury of something like that. <clears throat> but now you need, um, now maybe you, you can no longer do that because of schedules, but also you need something that's more replicable, that's like a real repeatable solution. So if you were able to create, you know, videos uh, based on, on those people that, that again, in my, in my opinion, don't need to be super polished. I think that the, the idea is you're new to an organization, you want to meet people, even if you're at home and, and, and virtual, you want to feel like you have an authentic experience with those people. So by by coupling you know video with the capability to uh, interact and have human interactions collaborate um, through you know um, through your learning experience that can be really powerful and that can make people uh, feel connected right away during the onboarding um, it can help them build their internal uh, stakeholder uh, relational scaffolding as a, as a friend of mine likes to call it um, which is absolutely so critical um, when you're starting a new job. Um, so yeah, I think that you know onboarding is a great use case for uh, something where previously we were able to, to maybe bring people together in a room, but today we need to we we need to change that that paradigm a little bit um, and and clearly still bring people together when we can, but think about how we can use video and other and other media to really create a, a, an impactful onboarding. Definitely. Yeah, we have just recently released uh, an HR guide that goes over not only onboarding but how you can use video at every stage of the employee experience, recruiting, onboarding, learning and development, upskilling, uh, you know, through all that, even, you know, of course, would hate to see people leave, but people often leave and you need sure. to have a strategy for offboarding them as well. Um, so yeah, but if, if you got to start someplace, definitely, I think onboarding is an amazing place. Now, I got one last question for you before I let you go. And again, thank you so much for uh, for taking time out of your busy day. Okay, my department's on board and we're going we're gonna to move to a more collaborative approach. We want to implement peer-to-peer -peer learning. How do we influence the company culture? How do we encourage the other departments to participate, to share the knowledge they have inside those departments? How do you influence the company culture to move in that direction? To give you a really concrete example, again, you know, when I speak with learning and development professionals, we talk about sort of the nuts and bolts of the job. And one of the things that we have to do is identify the learning needs of our organization. You know, we're, we're, we're wrapping up 2021, we're gonna move into 2022. What are my big ticket items? What, what do I need to, uh, what are the strategic um, learning uh, initiatives that are gonna enable things within my organization? And how do I identify those? Mm -hmm. So. You know, traditionally, that's been a top-down exercise. We have a, you have a strategic roadmap, you speak with a couple of executives, maybe you trickle down into different departments and you figure out, okay, you look at, you look at the data you have um, from performance reviews, from skills gaps and all that. And that's great. And, and there's, there's very much still a place for that um, in organizations. However, if you really want to then implement this culture, this the, the, a peer-to-peer -peer culture and, and a, and a bottom-up culture of, of sharing and collaborating around the learning experience, I think you need to complement that top-down learning and needs analysis with a means for people, all people in the organization, to identify their needs, to say, 
I, I recognize that I need to improve in this area. And it could be technical skills, it could be soft skills, it could be anything. And provide the transparency for those needs to be seen by the organization so that someone over here can say, oh, that's interesting, I have the same need. Or someone over here can say, well, you know what, I actually have some experience in that. Let's, let's get together and talk about how we can, how I can share that knowledge. So Again, you know, coming back to what I said at the beginning, L&D needs to create these opportunities, these channels, these instances for peer-to-peer -peer learning to happen. And, and so your learning needs analysis exercise is a very good example of how you can get, you can break, break down that wall and say, you're, not, you're no longer saying to your organization, this is what decisions were made up here and this is what you're going to learn next year. It's what do you guys feel like you need? What's going to have the most impact? Um, and how can we leverage uh, the, the collective knowledge of our organization to help each other and, and meet, meet our goals. Amazing. Really, really good stuff. Jonah, tell, where can the people find more? Where can they find more from you? Where can they find more from 360 Learning? Yeah, totally. Well, I encourage all of you to check out our website, um, 360learning.com. Um, as for reaching out to me, please don't hesitate to look me up on LinkedIn. I'm very active there. Um, in addition, um, I do a series of interviews with other L&D professionals, which you can get information through LinkedIn if you contact me. Um, it's called CLO Connect. That's the interview series you can also find on our website. And I've also recently started um, a, a Slack channel for L&D, for fellow L&D professionals um, and just L&D professionals for us to share these ideas, to talk about you know, um, challenges, to ask questions, uh, to learn from one another. Um, so if you reach out to me, I'd be happy if to, to, to add you to that community as well. Amazing. Jonah, again, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for the awesome stuff you and 360 Learning is doing out there. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, can't wait to see what comes next. Great. Thanks a lot. Take it easy, Nick. Okay. Thanks, Jonah. Food for thought and actionable tips too. Check out 360 Learning and all the awesomeness over there. Connect with me and Jonah on LinkedIn. All oh, that's linked in the description. And as always, let me know in the comments below how you're building a collaborative culture of learning in the year ahead. This is Nick from Powtoon, signing off. Happy New Year!